In 2020 and 2021, the FBI reportedly misused a digital surveillance tool more than 278,000 times, including against January 6 riot suspects, Black Lives Matter protesters, crime victims, and 19,000 donors to a congressional candidate considered, quote, a target of foreign influence. Hmm. This is all according to a newly unsealed court document from April 2022, where FBI officials admit they admit to a, quote, misunderstanding between bureau staff and Justice Department lawyers about how to correctly use electronic databases, which allows data to be collected about U.S. citizens under Section 702 of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, better known as FISA. According to The Washington Post, the main purpose of the database is to target foreign interference and terrorism, and the FBI is authorized to search the database, quote, only when agents have reason to believe that such a search will produce information relevant to foreign intelligence purposes or evidence of crimes. In June of 2020, the FBI searched for data on 133 people arrested, quote, in connection with civil unrest and protests following the death of George Floyd. After January 6, 2021, the FBI ran 223 1,132 separate inquiries to find evidence of possible foreign influence, but the DOJ concluded that there was no factual basis to believe that the searches would find foreign intelligence information or evidence of a crime, the Washington Post reports. According to the April 22, 2022 document, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, which oversees Section 702, told the FBI that if the agency does not fix the misuse, the court will mandate changes to FBI practices. This is a doozy, and I think is part and parcel of what the combined concerned communities on the left and the right have been saying for years, for decades, about the FBI. This misuse, although characterized by various camps as partisan, and at times it very much is because of the nature of partisan swings in the country, over time and over the aggregate, it hurts everybody who's vulnerable and anti-establishment in the country. The whole purpose of this database was it was authorized to look at potential foreign interference, foreign intelligence. But in the process of collecting that intelligence, they now have this bolus of information that catches up all of these domestic actors, American citizens. And they have been wanting, wantonly over a quarter of a million times, just between 2020 and 2021 alone, run searches targeting American citizens who were involved in very political events, Black Lives Matter 1-6, when there was absolutely no evidence that there was anything having to do with foreign interference in their activities. And frankly, the parts of the, the, the document that was disclosed that's supposed to explain the rationale of the government for doing these searches on these particular individuals, despite very superficially not having any relationship to foreign intelligence, are so redacted that the FBI's own thinking isn't even clear from what they've dis disclosed so far. Yeah, this is a great uh, case to illustrate, as you said, the threats from law enforcement to, uh, to political activist activity on all sides of the political spectrum. They went after Black Lives Matter protest and January 6th protesters, protesters, the extreme left, and the extreme right, um, to, and they, on, on the understanding the suspicion that there will be foreign involvement in these groups. There, there can never be just a spontaneous political movement arising in this country. The government will automatically think it has something to do with Russia. Yeah. Or, or if they don't actually yep. think that, they will use that excuse, use excuse. to look. And, and this is why you know we should have been skeptical going all the way back to how we responded to September 11th. It was the, the government said at every level, members of both parties, President Bush and Democrats, most of them went along with it, that the threat the foreign threat of terrorists is so great that we must we must uh, abridge our civil liberties mm -hmm. here at home to contend with that threat. And yep. we have seen how the excuse of foreign danger has has limited our civil liberties at every time. There's so much wrong with FISA the way it works. We previously found out that it is many of the, these courts. So either they can if, if there's a if there's a foreign threat, the president has pretty broad authority to just to just order his people mm -hmm. to do whatever they want. How it's supposed to work otherwise, if there's no evidence, is that the uh, government has to go to a, a court, the FISA court, that will authorize a search of, of this kind of, of data, a mm -hmm. data search. Um, what we found in the past is that the FISA courts were just rubber stamping this, mm -hmm. it, it, just like anything else. So easy to get a warrant. I mean, you know, not always. It depends kind of the, how civil libertarian the mm -hmm. judge involved is. But the FISA courts over and over again were just routinely authorizing uh, surveillance of Americans. And remember, the 
the governor, James Clapper, said that there was not this kind of routine surveillance of Americans mm -hmm. going on. Turns out that was a lie. He mm -hmm. lied before Congress. He's never suffered any consequences for that. In fact, I think I saw him on TV the other day on MSNBC or <laughs> CNN course. or something. Uh, it's uh, it's it's it, Americans are correct to fear and suspect that these agencies are abusing their power to spy on you because they are. Yes. This is this is digital stop and frisk. Yeah. I'm sorry. This is akin to saying, well, if we just look close, if you, if you look closely enough at one population, if you target one population enough, you're going to turn up disproportionately potential crimes, mistakes in your tax form, whatever it is, and they can get you if they scrutinize you hard enough. This is why so many people were frustrated with the draconian police policies in New York, why they were declared unconstitutional. And now on a national basis, using this intelligence database, they are looking at various populations and saying, okay, Black Lives Matter protesters, what do we got on them? Okay, one six protesters, what do we got on them? And using it to potentially constrain the ability of those groups to protest and have the same kind of consequences for their actions as any other citizen in the United States of America. We are in a very authoritarian place right now where we have you know, dozens of cop city protesters that have been jailed and facing, who are facing high sentences as a consequence of simply distributing pamphlets about the protest of this city, uh, of this um, uh, this cop facility that is also an environmental disaster because they're cutting down all these trees to, to build it, and which has absolutely no public buy-in from the citizens of, uh, uh, of Atlanta, which we've seen through these seven-hour-long hearings they've had where absolutely nobody gets up and testifies in support of what they're doing here. And there's largely radio si silence, particularly from the liberal media, about even the issues that are ostensibly left-leaning in nature, which is why I think there's an amazing opportunity if if the kind of the partisan veil of some of these arguments about the problems with the intelligence agencies is able to fall away and there can be a real bipartisan solidarity against addressing some of these issues, it could be a really powerful moment in American history. Yeah, and keep in mind that, you know, the geniuses in our national law enforcement, they think that if you're amplifying talking points that are similar to talking points that anyone affiliated with Russia is saying, that you must be uh, captured by right. Russian interests. Remember, that's what they've said. So it is so easy to imagine someone, you know, just tweet on either side. On the as, as you brought up before, the, an example on the left saying that you know black people are not treated correctly in this country, or on the on the conservative side saying. Um, you know, that the, the, we should stop funding the Ukraine intervention or something. Um, how an FBI person, because of what we've seen from the Twitter files, could conclude, well, they're, they must be Russian. They're coordinating. They're coordinating with Russian. They must be, yeah. there's some formal influence going on there when it's just, okay, they happen to have said things right. that align with what some Russian interest is saying. That actually isn't coordination. That's just, that's just people expressing their views, which is yeah. protected in this country. Right. So here's what I want to know. FISA is coming up for reauthorization at the end of the year. And here is my, you know, my, my, my challenge to Republicans. Vote against this. Mm -hmm. Vote against it. Uh, because Republicans, and, and, and Democrats too, Democrats who purport to care about civil liberties, and some Democrats, you know, as the, as the kind of specter of 9-11 got a little bit more in the distance, mm -hmm. you had some Democrats waking up to, how, oh my God, we've signed away our rights because of the Patriot Act. Um, you Democrats get with you Republicans who say Trump has been unfairly targeted by the FBI and the, the deep state is out to get, you know, conservatives and conservative activists. Let's all get together and actually vote against a, a, a tool that the government uses to abuse our rights. Because I'll hear, you hear a lot of complaints, yeah. and then when it comes up for a vote, these things get authorized like, you know, 500 to 2 or something. There's, you know, just quirky, like, Thomas Massey and Rand Paul type people vote against it. Everyone else votes for it. Uh, I would like to see, let's see more people in the, no, the government has abused this power. You don't get it anymore. Yeah, I'd love to see something maybe from Barbara Lee, a, a classically sure. brave anti-war voice back in the day, obviously now running for, for Senate. I would love to hear some things from Democrats about this, especially these left-leaning ones. More rising right after this.